Whiskey, Jason here. Whiskey from the viewpoint of an American in Germany tasting rare and exotic whiskies. Today I am in Sweden with High Coast. June 30th, 2018, um, Box Whiskey changed the name to High Coast because of a um, problem with Compass Box. Now, every time I say High Coast, I want to say um, West, um, a High West. <laughs> and so I'm always confused with that, or Island Park, or I, I, I. Um, so that's that. All right, this is back. Back, of course, means mountain. And this is a sherried mature whiskey. Let's take a look at this color here. This is all natural color, people. This is beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Now, I am not one of the people that says the darker the, the whiskey, the better it is. But this whiskey is kind of interesting. I would never have actually bought this bottle myself. So I have a group of super fans. These are people who support me by Patreon and also here by YouTube. And they actually, one guy recommended, hey, Jason, would you buy the bottle? So I went online. I said, okay, look at this. It's 50%. It's a bourbon uh, matured whiskey, Pedro Jimenez um, finish. Eh, okay, 55 euros. Why not? I, take, I took a look at the whiskey base, which is 133633, um, and I was like, all right, why not? And then I thought, wait, there's 13,000 bottles out there of this. That's a lot. That's a fairly large turnout um, of bottles. I was like, why is it still there? This was released in September of 2019. So we now have um, first quarter of 2021. So this has been out for almost two and a half, one and a half years. Why isn't it gone by now? So, and then I went on the webpage, which is highcoastwhiskey.se for Sweden, S-E. And you go to English because I don't speak Swedish. And then you go to the products and you go to back and you have a little bit of information. <laughs> a little bit. I'm going to really geek out on you for a second. So we go actually down below here to the recipe. The recipe says a berg consists of 100% unpeated whiskey, which was first matured and first filled bourbon barrels and then finished and first filled sherry casks previously used for the maturation of um, Pedro Jimenez sherry. Very good. No problem. I'm not geeking out yet. First maturation um, bourbon barrels with 3.61 to 4.88 years and then transferred to pay X barrels for first maturation between 0 0.67 and 2.31 years. I've never divided my years up into 2.31s, but that's okay. So we know that the barrels that were used, they had 99 barrels with 55 liters each. They had seven barrels of 250 liters each. They had three barrels with 200 liters and another three barrels with 120 liters. Okay, so um, very important, this says non um, chill filtered and no coloring added. So then I click here on the casks used. And what I get is that the um, 99 55 liter casks were filled for approximately 12 months. Okay, very good. So they put Pedro Jimenez in there for 12 months. It was a seasoned cast. 99 of those little tiny um, 55 liter casks, no problem. The 250 liter casks, there were seven of them, they were filled on three different occasions during a time of 2.5 years. So they put Pedro Jimenez in there once, take it out, put it in again, take it out, put it in again, take it out. I don't know. Were they really finishing the Pedro Jimenez for eight months each? Ah, doesn't make much sense to me. But hey, why not? And what they also had were the 120 and the 200 liter cask, each three, so a total of six. These were actually, and this is important here, these were actually um, used to mature whiskey, I'm sorry, whiskey, were used to mature sherry. Very old PX for 15 years. That's not something you get to see every day. So three of these um, casks, the big ones, were actually used for 15 years. So there's a very old Pedro Jimenez in there. Excellent, excellent. So geeking out a little bit further, it says until October 2014, our casks were matured in a damp warehouse where they lost slightly more alcohol than expected. I talked to the one of the guys at a whiskey fair in Bremen um, two years ago, and he said we lost a lot more. <laughs> and then they actually moved everything into new warehouses, and that was October of 2014. All right, the last time I'm going to geek out on you. No, the second to last time. I'm sorry, there's more. So between um, the 13th and the 16th of September 2029, the 112 PX casks up above the 99 the seven and the six, they were all then um, emptied 
And it says here they weighed 6,994 kilos of whiskey with an ABV of 59.74. I've never, ever seen that anywhere, that they write down the amount of liquid used in this match. Um, the, maybe the liter amount, but never the kilo amount. And then to these, um, to this uh, 6,994 kilos, they added 1,550 kilos of water to actually water it down here to 50%. Now, I'm very interested in this because um, there's some type of fractal um, uh, disruption that happens when you put too much water into a whiskey too quickly. I hope they very slowly diluted this. This is the best way to do it. All right, and then the bottling started on the um, 17th. Oh, they did not. I guarantee you they did not. Um, <laughs> because if they actually emptied the cast on the 16th and the bottling started on the 17th, they just shoved that water in there really quickly. I would not have done that. All right, so um, they started bottling it and then on the 17th of um, September at 8.30 in the morning. Good. Now, uh, one last thing. I clicked on the word ingredients and I got bombed with more information. <laughs> I love this. I'm really geeking out. Uh, high coast, well done, well done, well done. I just love the amount of information you have here. So they talk about the, the type of yeast. It's um, Fermentus Zaf Whiskey M1. It must be your own proprietary. They talked about the um, unpeated malt. It was Pilsner malt, malt from the Wikinger malt in Halmstadt. So this is actually local barley. And we know it because they used a total of eight different types of barley. So they took anything they could get. They had Rosalina. I've heard of that. Sebastian, never heard of that. Triple, never heard of that. Barkin, never heard of that. Shandy, never heard of that. Quench, heard of that. Propino, never heard of that. And Tam Tam, Ouch Columbus, never heard of that. There's eight different barley types in here. Why? Because they had barley from eight different farms, I'm sure. So um, the processed water they talk about being filtered through sand and carbon filters. They talk about the cooling water. They talk about the batch sizes. They talked about the average fermentation time, which is 80 hours, which is good. And stainless steel wash washbacks. They talked about distilling, which was um, either on the 28th of November 2012, and they also distilled on the 17th of April 2014. So there's actually two different batches going here together. And of course, um, it's unpeated. Isn't that, isn't that fascinating? I really, really like that type of information. Thank you. I probably bored the, the heck out of you, but that's okay. All right, my comparison whiskey. You're gonna probably go, Jason, what's going on? Well, first of all, it's not Scotch. This is Irish. This is Swedish. This was matured in um, bourbon barrels. This was matured in bourbon barrels. This was finished in Pedro Jimenez. This was finished in Pedro Jimenez. This is 50%. This is 46%. This is no age statement. This is oh no age statement. This is um, 55 euros. This is about 46 euros. Mm. And I have the feeling that they're somewhat similar. So I'm going to pour a little bit. Now, I actually bought two bottles of the, um, the Whistler, the PX, not the PS, the Pay PX, I love you, single malt. And it's a small batch as well. Uh, one bottle went away immediately. The second bottle is slowly but surely disappearing. So if you take a look at the colors, first of all, you'll notice that the back is much, much darker, more of a browner type of color here. Has to probably do with that old 15-year-old PX um, that was in there. On the nose, the thing that surprised me the most was the, was the lack of sweetness. This is a fruit wood malt moment, but very, very low on the sweetness. Think of a dark, dry red wine. Bam! Now, this is more of a German um, red wine, which is very sweet. This is almost um, succulent sweet. This is almost syrupy sweet. This is almost too much of a sweetness for me personally. This jumps out in the glass, grabs you by the nostril and just says, here, I'm here and I'm sweet and I'm going to be a little bit like a, a, like a cinnamon bun type of sweet without the cinnamon. Yeah, that gooey type of thing. All right, going over here and this really, really surprised me and present, pleasantly surprised me how dry, um, how non-sweet and so fruity this whiskey actually is. Mmm. 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 
Now, it goes up and it's like, oh, look, there's fruit, more fruit. Oh, look, there's actually more um, wood. Nice. And then it's like, oh, it gets hot. And then it's like, oh, wait, it goes back up. So this is tiny, exactly where that thing is. Mm -mm -mm. There's a little bit of a dip there. And the dip is actually, the problem is when you add a, it actually says, add a drop of water and give it some time. Um, if you add a tiny little bit of water, take it down to about 43% for me, perfect, perfect, perfect ABV in this case. And you're going to get an absolutely almost um, a whiskey, which is almost without any type of mistake. Now, 50, 43%, that's the problem with non-chill filtration. It's a problem with geeks like me. We want a little bit higher ABV. I'm not the person that says higher ABV is always the best. Um, for me, as I said, 43%. Dunnage. Hmm. Hmm. It's creamier. Hmm. This is like a whiskey that's like a great Bordeaux dry wine. This is a dry whiskey with a massive amount of Pedro Jimenez um, flavor there. And it's well, well done. The oak, the tannins just support everything. The alcohol is just wonderfully encompassing. I gave this like a B minus in my German video. I'm going to give it a B minus as well. It's almost going up to a B. Value for money, 55 euros, I think is absolutely great for a... Um, continental European um, whiskey with such type of um, background information and history here. Um, I'm going to give it a solid C for value for money. I really, really like this uh, more than I thought I was. Um, welcome to high coast Sweden at 63 degrees north. They're way up there, by the way. I've met the guys. I've interviewed the guys at um, the Bremen... Uh, Christmas market twice now. Um, last year didn't happen. Who knows if this year will. Um, but they were fabulous. I enjoyed them a lot. They're doing some good, good stuff. Just real quick, the, the Whistler, the uh, Pedro Jimenez, um, PX, I love you. Um, from the Whistler, I'm going to, in the next couple of weeks, I'm going to buy a new cask there with a couple of my friends here from Germany. And this time it's going to be a Madeira cask. We're going to that set for maybe six to eight years. Going to be interesting. Much sweeter, much more of syrup, much more of a, a sweet bun type of moment. Towards the end, you get a little bit of a mocha, a little bit of an espresso moment, a little bit of darker type of characters there. Is it a bad whiskey? No. Is this a better whiskey? Yes, in my opinion. Um, wonderful. Well done. Wonderful. Um, there's some great whiskeys out there not coming from Scotland. Open up your eyes. Open up your um, search criteria or parameters and um, don't forget about high coast here in Sweden wonderful wonderful stuff really like them and once again thank you very much for the and recommendation that was given to me whiskey Jason here whiskey from the viewpoint of an American tasting rare and exotic whiskeys oh I think I forgot to mention 13,000 bottles which I still think is a fairly large amount for a batch but hey it's going to be there for two years and they're going to do it again and I think that might actually be a good idea Please subscribe, please tell others, please share this video, be so kind, and I will see you soon. Whiskey Jason here, bye bye.